Hello! Welcome to the Half Job George Restoration Channel. In today's video, I drop my ratchet again. I drop something and nearly knock the camera over. Oh, bollocks. In today's video, I put my front axle in the front of my Land Rover Series 2. I put the diff in, which I built in a previous video, check that out at the end of this video, and I put my half shafts in. I also set up the swivel joint. Swivel joint was something I stripped down a long time ago. I called it part one, so I guess this is part two. And if you want to see me taking it to bits, go and watch part one. But don't forget to watch this video as well. The first job is to put the seals in the end of the axle casing. This keeps the axle oil and diff oil separate from the swivel housing oil. I give the end of my axle a nice little bit of a clean with some brake cleaner and then I use some silicon spray on the gasket and on the end of the axle to allow the seal to slide in nicely. The axle flange then gets a clean up with a file to remove any overspill of paint. Then I give it a liberal coat of molly grease to seat the gasket. Once you've done that, you can bolt up your chrome balls. Don't forget you put your seals on the back of the ball first, otherwise you're going to struggle to get them on later. Don't forget to put your seal retaining plate on either. Six bolts are used to hold the chrome ball to the axle flange. One is a different length. The one that is a different length holds the steering stop on. Don't forget to put that on. You'll need it. Well, earlier in the video you saw me put the axle into position and you didn't see me bolt it down. That's because I hadn't ordered the U-bolts. The U-bolts turned up a couple of days later, hence the chrome balls are already on, and I'm bolting the axle down now. Once you've bolted up your chrome balls, we can start to assemble the swivel housing. I started by bolting the bottom pin in and using some grease to prevent the oil coming back out again. At one point I had packed the bottom bearing, a taper roller bearing, with some molly grease, thinking that this was a good idea. Later I removed this because I realised it probably wasn't a good idea given that this housing gets filled with oil for the swivels, and molly grease might have contaminated the oil. Earlier in the video you'll remember me saying that I fitted the diff. Not really sure where the footage went for me doing this, but as you can see, at the moment, in the background, it's already fitted. Point to note at this point is that I'm not actually tightening these bolts up all the way at the moment. 
uh, I'm just leaving them slack, just winding them in, just enough to hold that bottom pin in position. Once you've got your bottom pin in, and your bearing, this can be placed over the chrome ball, and the bottom can be tightened up, and this should prevent it falling off. Having popped the swivel housing over the chrome ball, I thought it might be a good idea to clean out these threads. However, in hindsight, I probably should have done this on the bench, as all the bits went all over the chrome ball and I had to clean it again. Sometimes you just have to wonder how you get away with things. It always surprises me when I see people struggle to wind a stud into plates using pipe grips or mold grips. It's quite simple really. Wind a nut on far enough to get a second nut above it. Then lock the two together by holding the bottom one and tightening the top one. You can then wind the stud into place using the top nut. Simple. To take it to bits, simply undo the top nut from the bottom nut and take the nuts off. The studs will stay in place. Not only would I recommend cleaning your threads out with the swivel housing on the bench, you should probably put your studs in there as well, rather than letting it flop around like I did. Make sure that the bush and the pin are well lubricated. Inserting the pin into the hole dry will give you a false readout later on. This is where I made my biggest mistake. Once your bottom pin is tight, if you don't have play, you never will get it to work. You will have to put shims in the bottom. I worked it out eventually. So having taken the shims out, measured them, put it all back together, minus 0.5 millimetres of shim, I got the same reading on my spring gauge. This is when I started to realise I'd done something wrong. While setting up the shims, it quickly became apparent that I wasn't actually doing what I was intending to do. 
the shims are there to set up the preload on the bottom bearing and give the driver some resistance. The resistance is supposed to be created between the bush at the top and the bearing at the bottom. However, I had failed to put in some shims on the bottom peg and this had resulted in the resistance being created by metal grating on the metal between the outer housing and the inner chrome ball. As soon as I realised this, I put a shim in the bottom, 0.75mm, or 30 tau for those who are watching in black and white. Once you've put the bottom bearing in and tightened up the bottom swivel pin, check that you still have play. If you don't have play, you have already created a problem for yourself, and this is what I'd done. If you've still got play, you can proceed to the next step. The next step is to put some shims under the top swivel pin and tighten it up. Then, measure the preload you have put on the bearings using a spring balance. I was aiming for 10 pounds of pull, because I think that's what Land Rover wanted. However, uh, it depends what manual you read. Haynes manuals and military manuals do seem to differ, and if you're using new parts, then you'll need to go for something a little bit higher and allow them to bed in. I decided that there probably wasn't anything like an actual figure to go with, so I just selected 10. I'll see how I get on and let you know later. So remember, with the bottom pin tight and the top one loose, you must still have play. Once I'd learnt what I was really doing, I started off by putting all of the shims I had under the top pin. Once I'd found out I'd got the play still there, and wrapped myself across the ankle with my ratchet, I started by taking out the shims, until I had the preload that I wanted. I kept removing shims until I got rid of all of the play. When I say I kept removing shims, what I mean is I kept reducing the thickness of the pack of shims. Whether this meant taking out a 10,000 shim and replacing it with a 5,000 shim, or just removing a 5,000 shim, whatever you need to do to reduce the thickness of those shims. Once I'd done this a few times, I'd got a preload that I was able to measure with my spring balance. This time, the force required to move the swivel housing was 8 pounds. I was looking for 10. So I measured the shims I was using and reduced the height of the top pin by putting in a smaller pack of shims.
Having aimed for £10 and some books saying £12, I decided to accept £11 as a reasonable compromise. With that job finally done, I moved on to fitting the stub axles. As with the rest of the gaskets in this build, I'm using molly grease as a jointing compound. This should provide the classic number of leaks that Land Rovers have become well known for the world over. This bronze bush supports the half shaft and is lubricated by the oil in the swivel housing. Make sure it's nice and clean and make sure it's still there. One of mine fell out when I was ripping the thing to bits in part one. Here's a top tip I learned after the event. If you've ever had one of these lock washers uh, twist whilst you're talking up your bolt, uh, apparently you're supposed to put a little bit of lubrication under the head of the bolt. Who knew? Not me. Well, I think that's enough for this video. It's already long enough. Join me next time where we'll be building up the front brakes, probably. And hopefully we'll get the wheels on. Once I've got the wheels on, I can get this thing out of the garage and I can start building the engine, which is something I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, smashing the like button and ringing the bell so you can get notifications when I post new videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Half Job George, out.